atmosphere of Zephyron as the incredibly vicious behemoth monster was about to turn them into an after-dinner mint. <laughs> Using the brown hornet's superpowers, they naturally escaped unharmed. Yeah, yeah, look at that, look at that. Now, we pick up with our heroes as they face an even worse threat. I am the commissioner. Surrender at once. <laughs> Where is the wise and benevolent leader of this planet, the teacher? The teacher is gone. Now I am ruling the planet, Argest. Take them to the dungeon. I will handle these mechanical ruffians. This foolishness. You are definitely not a nice man, Commissioner. I shall find the teacher, and once again, he will be the leader of Argus. Fear not, crew. I shall return. a surprise for you, too. You will be the first to try out my new Corbinite cruncher. Hello, teacher. Uh -huh. What's new, Brownie? Long time no see. I have come to return you as the rightful leader of Argus. Well, Brownie, I got some bad news for you. I'm not coming back. You see, my time is almost up. How can you know? I am a robot. As you can see, my transistors are tiny. Now, do me a favor, Brownie. Go back and tell the people they have to go on without me. I won't keep you from your pressing engagement. Begin! Hey, fellas, wait. I, I never really wanted to be a pancake. Yeah! Hold on, crew. I will save you. People of Argus, I have seen the teacher, and I am sad to say he is never coming back. You have learned from the teacher. You have his wisdom and his legacy. You must go on without him. And as for you, Commissioner, I shall keep a close superhero eye on your activities. Now, we must away. I have a feeling that the people of the planet will make it. Even without the teacher. Well, uh, my feelings aren't so good about us. Look! We're being drawn into the center of the sun. Will our daring heroes survive their latest dangerous threat? Tune in next week for another exciting episode of The Brown Hornet! Hey, 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 hey. Got out the way. Ooh! Hey! Ooh! This just
just might play. Here you are, men. The Fat Albert Instant Budget Low Cost Do It Yourself Skateboard. A couple of little corrections. Firstly, it wasn't instant since you started building this thing three days ago. Granted. Secondly, the low budget turned out to be cost plus, zooming it up to more than 42 cents. Granted. And thirdly, the do-it-yourself part called for all of our creative efforts to unfix what you fixed. Granted, none of us are perfect. <laughs> now for the big test run. Now for the big test three. Yours truly. Nobody get in my way. Ah! Anyone for tennis? You okay? Fit as a fiddle. Same shape, too. <laughs> Only king size. <laughs> you all know my Uncle Monty, don't you? Monty the Magnificent, at your service. Singer of songs, dancer of dances, the second greatest all-around entertainer in the world. Please, please, no applause. <laughs> I have a headache. <laughs> Monty put a little too much on that one. You gotta envy Undine. It's sure nice to have an uncle who can do all those neat things. I mean, your old Uncle Bill here has been known to do a trick or two in his day. Watch me pull a rabbit out of this hat. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Close. Just for that, you'll have to stay in there, rabbit. Let's see what Uncle Monty's doing. Oof. You know, kids, skateboards can be a lot of fun when you use them wisely. First of all, never skate in the streets where there's traffic. I don't know if that truck driver should be given a ticket for speeding or for flying too low. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Monty, you're too much. Okay, first thing I want to do is ride this thing standing on my hands. No hot dogging yet, Rudy. After you learn to control the board, you can cut the fancy capers. If old Rude can't start right from the top, he won't settle for the bottom. Undine kept telling us what a royal clown sport you were, and here you were back away from a little old skateboard. Ha! Uncle Monty can do anything, can't you, Uncle Monty? Well, I... Ha. I thought so. Well, let's see now. I guess this is the wrong way to do it, eh? <laughs> Ooh, <wait. laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, right. he's a bad Yeah, right I ain't never seen right him like that. Mark Twain once said, we can all pick our friends, but we cannot pick our relatives. <laughs> Now, he might not have said that if he'd had a relative like Undine's Uncle Monty. Not only is he a talented performer, but he's a real nice human being. How much further, Uncle Monty? We're almost there, Undine. Cotton candy? Nope. Caramel taffy apples? Nope. Please, Uncle Monty, tell me what you've got in the bag. Uh-uh. You'll see in a minute, Undine. Now watch how a real magician can make things appear. Oh, that's what you've got in the bag. Crumbs for the ducks. 
What have you got against fish? <laughs> We've got more mouths to feed. Hey, hey, hey. Bad news, dudes. <laughs> What's the matter? Somebody holding you down to six meals a day? <laughs> Shut up, plastic cup. Plastic cup? Hey, why you call me a plastic cup? No glass. <laughs> no glass? You mean no class? You said it. I didn't. <laughs> I got something to lay on you, dude. Ain't gonna be any more team sports at school. They just cut out the sports out of the school budget. They can't do that. No use, dudes. There's nothing we can do about it. Oh, I don't know about that. I have an idea. Yes, sir. I think I know a way to get you out of your troubles. You mean? Yes. Undine's Uncle Monty is going to put on a big benefit show. Now, you're probably wondering, how come I know this? Well, that's what they did in all those old movies with Gloria Jean, Mickey Rooney, and Deanna Durbin. Your folks will tell you who they were. Anyway, see if I'm not right about the benefit show. <laughs> Rudy, what are you doing all by yourself there? Resting. Resting? But you haven't done anything yet. I know that. I have to get rested before I start, don't I? School closed for repairs time again. School closed for repairs time? What are you talking about? No class. Come on, kids. We don't have time for bickering. I, Uncle Monty, hereby appoint you two as a team. Ugh. Unroll it and festoon it around these hallowed halls. Hey, 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 let's not delay. Choo-choo, one side for the Fat Albert Express. <laughs> Don't look now, Fat Albert, but aren't you forgetting something? Uncle Monty, don't worry about the decorating. We'll finish everything, won't we, kids? While we're doing that, you can rehearse for your performance. Our that yeah, right on. right on. Now, the first thing I do is open the act with a little juggling bit. Here comes the jokes, folks. <laughs> you know why Humpty Dumpty had a great fall? Why? To make up for a crummy summer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? I just found a brand new way to save money. I use somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, money's always been a problem. I'm not putting you on. I never had a penny to my name. So I changed my name. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not apologizing for my actions. No siree. As a matter of fact, there's only one dude I'd take my hat off to. My barber! <laughs> He's a real genius. He just solved the parking problem. He bought a parked car. <laughs> well. I may not be as good as Uncle Monty, you see. But then who is? He's a very talented dude. Catch what he's doing now. <laughs> yes, sirree, kids. I want you to meet my wonderful talking dog, Homer. Homer, what kind of dog are you? A police dog. You don't look like a police dog. Of course not. I'm in the Secret Service. <laughs> Secret Service, eh? Yeah, CIA. CIA? Yep. Car investigating animal. <laughs> well, look here. Where do you investigate these cars? Mostly in oh, 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 parking lots. 
barking lot. Hmm. <laughs> Uncle Monty, do you know the story about the mountain? No, Undine. <laughs> Forget it, it's just a bluff. <laughs> Uncle Monty, do you know what one candle asked the other candle? No, what did one candle ask the other candle? Are you going out tonight? <laughs> hey, 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 that's the way. I get it, like this. There. Perfect. Except may I make one slight suggestion? <laughs> hey, hey, that's hey, great, hey, man. Hey, this is a fun song. Give it five, brother. Hey, what is it? Hey, Wombly, you coming to see Uncle Monty's big benefit show? Uh, there ain't gonna be a show. Oh, that's too bad. Uncle Monty's big benefit show? Uh, there ain't gonna be a show, Fat Albert. Huh? Uncle Monty just... <laughs> died. That's a mistake. Well, it's true. Uncle Monty's gone, and it's hard to believe. Uh, anybody here want to play a game of catch? Yeah, I guess we all feel pretty bad about Uncle Monty. But think of poor Undine. How do you think she feels? Oh, Undine, come in. I'm just getting some of your Uncle Monty's things together. What for? Well, we have to put them away. Put them away? Yes, I thought we'd make a sewing room out of this. No, this is Uncle Monty's room. Why can't we leave it the way it is? Look, Undine, we all loved Uncle Monty. Then why are you changing everything? Because he's gone. He's not gone to me. And you wouldn't say that either if you really loved him. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Good old Uncle Monty. It isn't easy for any of us to adjust to the loss of a loved one. And Undine is taking it especially hard, and I hope she'll be able to get over it. And so do Fat Albert and the gang. Albert? Here. Undine? <clears throat> Has anyone seen Undine? No, ma'am. Not since Uncle Monty died. Mm, it's been some time now. I hope she's all right. Wonder how Undine is. Well, we pass her house every day on the way home. One of us just stop in and see how she is. Hey, hey, hey. I know what you're going to say. No way. Not me. Well, if not you, who's going to do it? Yeah, well, man. You want it, Albert. Albert. Ooh. Mm. Undine, uh, you, uh, you okay? We're, uh, you know, uh, sorry, real sorry uh, about, you know, all the gang miss you, uh, yeah. When you coming back to, uh, school? Poor Fat Albert, he aims to please. But judging by Undine's reaction, he's not a very good shot. Well, Fat Albert may be down, but he's not out. Hey, hey, hey. Sure wish I knew what to say to Undine. No fun having your best uncle die. But it isn't right for Undine to stop living either. I just don't know. Uh-oh. Hey, 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 Undine. Is this seat taken? Care for some fresh broken cookies? Well, there's my poor little girl in the same spot again. Look, Undine, this just isn't right. We all know how much you love your uncle, and we love him too. 
Well, you gotta face it, he's gone. No, he's not gone, not to me. Albert's right, Undine. Uncle Marty is gone. No, no! <laughs> oh. Okay, how come nobody's talking? On account when your big mouth is open, there's no room for anybody else to talk. Don't try to jive me. Everybody's uptight about Undine. Yeah, man, I sure put my foot in it. I wouldn't be surprised if she never talked to me again. Undine, may I come in? Undine, I know how much you miss Uncle Marty, and I miss him too, but he still lives in both of us. We'll always have Marty's wonderful zest for life. It's up to us to carry it on. It's a priceless gift he left us. We should treasure it. Gang? Oh, oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, how you doing? Well, how's it going? Pretty good. Hey, it's nice seeing you smile again. I've had time to think. Uncle Monty wouldn't want to be remembered with tears. He'd rather be remembered for the fun he brought everybody. So I'm going to try to be like he was. There's something else Uncle Monty would have wanted. Huh? What's that? He would have wanted us to go on with the show. Well, it looks like Undine is on her way back. She's starting to accept the fact that death is a reality, brings heartaches. But Undine knows now that hanging on to the sadness doesn't help anything. And as her Uncle Monty would have said, the show must go on. <laughs> <laughs>